everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. So today I wanted to talk about uh, metallics, particularly steel. So maybe one of the most common things painted, uh, if you sort of take the sum total of all miniatures, um, because, you know, armor tends to be steel, weapons tend to be steel, right? It just chain mail, it just shows up everywhere on miniatures. And the reason I've got this guy in here today is because this is going to be end up being the, the focus of what we talk about here in a little while. Um, which is, we're going to paint this stuff here in chain, some of this these elements in chain mail on his legs here. Um, but I want to talk a bit about metal and kind of one of the challenges of metal. So at the beginning of this, you saw an image that went up of uh, non-metallic metal steel. And I just kind of went there, was there for a second. So I want you to go back and, and look at that. And I, this isn't going to be about non-metallic metal. I honestly, it, it would be hard to talk about hobby cheating and talk about non-metallic metal, just because it is a very time-consuming process. To really make it look good takes a long time. But the problem with metal, and the challenge I find, I find metal to honestly be one of the trickiest things to paint, because... What you're trying to replicate when you paint a miniature, so let's move this guy totally into frame. When you're, when you're painting a miniature, what you're trying to replicate is something that would be this size, right? And you're trying to bring down the highlights because light doesn't hit and interact with something this size in the same way it does if this guy were actually 40 feet tall, okay? So if you painted a one-to-one -one miniature, in other words, if, you, if I was painting this giant real size, I wouldn't need to do any highlighting. I would just literally paint him and it would more or less look correct. I might need to do some tonal variation to like make skin look real, but if I was wanted to paint something red, if he had like a red cloak, I would just paint it red, and that's it, and it would be accurate, because I wouldn't need to highlight. Light would simply do the work for me, but because this guy is once whatever size, of not, not 40 feet tall, right, then I have to recreate and force light to look like it would actually look. Okay, so nowhere does this get trickier than with metal. Metal has the added challenge of reflecting and working with light in very strange ways. And you can easily see this. So let's just let's just take something very simple that I have sitting beside me, which is this thing here, this like my X-Acto knife. Okay, so first of all, this is chrome or very close, like it's highly polished steel, right? And you can tell on the blade there. Look what happens when I move it. And it's catching reflections of the things around it, right? And that's coloring that. Um, and so you can see the difference between the blade and this. And you can see how the light is treating the blade itself differently than the, uh, or the blade edge, I should say, different than the blade, different than the body of the thing, right? And it looks mostly gray if I set it at the right angle, but if I set it at a different angle, all of a sudden, boom, there's this huge portion of white where it's reflecting the light from up above. So if I turn it, and you can see it's polished enough, it's actually, it will actually even reflect my finger. So metal tends to be very tricky because it plays with light in weird ways. And I think how most people do metal is probably something like this guy, okay? And this was a figure painted very, very long ago. Um, which is just you use some kind of darker metallic, um, like a, you know, I don't know, in current Citadel range, probably Lead Belcher. I prefer like a Vallejo Gun Gray to start with. Okay, so they go for something like this, and then you just black wash it with like your, you know, your Nuln Oil or something like that, and you call it a day. Okay, the problem is, is that, one, it make, if you leave your wash as the last step, it makes the metal look very dirty and non-reflective. It'll actually knock the shine right out of it. Um, and even the gray metal has some kind of reflectivity to it. Metal is different than cloth or something, right? And, and two, if your wash is your last step, you're not accurately usually capturing the highlights, okay, of where this thing should be playing with the light. So... One of the things that non-metallic metal attempts to do is to make that sort of distinction. It forces those extreme highlights. Metal, let's return to our thing again. Metal has these extreme distinctions, right? Where this is extremely bright. Like, look how brightly that's reflecting back at the, at the camera there, right? 
Whereas down here near the tip of the blade, with just a little shadow like my finger near it, look how dark that gets, right? So there's a very extreme contrast on metal. So what we're going to talk about today is doing something like this, okay? We're going to use the techniques of non-metallic metal, but we're going to use them a little simpler and faster, and we're going to use them on regular steel. So you can see here what I've done in the same technique as, uh, as, as non-metallic metal, where we have these extreme highlights, okay? I've pushed it up and down with washes, all right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how can we make metal look more realistic while not driving ourselves insane, hopefully, with, uh, with making things complicated and doing non-metallic metal. Now, let's talk about paint choice. Okay, so first off, here's two different colors of metal. So one is silver, and the other is chainmail silver. Now, if I turn those over so you can see them, it's pretty evident very quickly that this one is quite dark and this one is quite light, right? And uh, never, ever, ever, I mean, I shouldn't say never, ever, ne nothing is never, ever, very, very, very rarely use this or start here, okay? If you're starting at like a silver or a chrome or something and this is your base metal, you better be doing like somebody wearing mirror armor, okay? Because this just isn't realistic. Like, armor, steel, iron, it isn't this chrome silver color, okay? Instead, you want to start with something here. Something in your darker gray. I think lead belcher is about this color if you're in Citadel. Um, again, I don't, I don't use Citadel paint, so I don't really know. Um, but then we come immediately to our second big challenge with metal. You can see how well I clean my palette here, by the way. I just scrape it clean and go to the next thing. So we put out some of the metal into our palette, okay? And our immediate challenge is that you can't thin metal the same way, metal paint, the same way you thin uh, normal paint. If you just thin metal paint with water, it's going to act weird. Why? Well, because this paint right here isn't like this paint right here. This, okay, is using pigment to create color. This is using metal, like literal metal flakes, okay? What's used is different. Sometimes it's mica, sometimes it's uh, aluminum or aluminum if you prefer, okay? Well, whatever it is, it's a heavy metal, and it's it's not, like, quite literally, it's a heavy metal. It's not meant to be broken up. It doesn't act in the same way with mediums. So if you're going to thin out metallics, you either need to, A, use something like a thinner or a glaze medium or lamia medium, something like that, okay? So that's number one, always thin with something like that. Uh, and number two, uh, you... The other great way to cheat is to use what you already want to do. So you can use like your Nolan Oil, or if you prefer, and this is actually my favorite of late, so this is from P3, and this is their Armor Wash. And what I find, these are very, very different products, by the way. These are both sort of black shades, but when this says Armor Wash, this means Armor Wash, because this is a reflective, semi-gloss black. Okay, it's not just a transparent thin black like this, a wash. This maintains shininess. When you put it on something, it has a gloss to it. So the other easy way to thin metallics is to simply use a drop or two of a wash. That washes are and shades and all these things, it doesn't matter where they're from, by the way. Like I, I, I love this P3 one because it has that semi-gloss to it. But the reality is they could be from anywhere. Um, they are basically medium. Like, the very large percentage of this thing is medium. Okay? And so, as a result, it thins very well what you want to do. So I'm still going to just mix it up a little there. We'll mix that black in. It's going to darken my metal down just a little because I only use, like, two drops of it. Um, you have to be careful. You can... Uh, That's a fun way, by the way, to do colored metal is to take your... Uh, you know, your various shades or whatever. You could use, like, your ghost tints from uh, Badger Minotaur or your shade colors, your glaze colors, or I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Whatever you like. And you can thin down your metallics like that. And that gets them to the point 
where they're nice and thin. You can see how that runs down there. And now we can go ahead and paint this chain mail. Okay? And that gives us a little more control, puts it on a little more thin. I'm not going to do the whole thing here because this guy's rather big. And if I painted every single part that I'm going to do as chain mail, we would be here a while. And uh, I don't want to take that much time. So instead, I'm just going to kind of do this foot right here. Uh, the other cross pieces you see that I'm not touching are probably going to end up gold. Um, so we're just going to do the uh, what looks like it's these little, I don't know, it's weirdly crafted chain mail on this model, but I assume that's what it's supposed to be. That's what it looked like in the picture to me. So, And as, as we know before from our hobby cheating basics, we always start by Googling the picture and looking at the images of other people who've painted them, especially if it's the studio that's done it because the studio directly talked to the sculptor and could ask questions like, what the heck is this thing supposed to be? So there you go. So we've got some metal on that leg, right? Easy enough. You'll notice I started from gray. Um, like I had basically, a, this, this guy was Zenithal highlighted to begin with. So I had my track here, but I started with gray. In general, it's a good idea to put silver metallic over gray or black or something like that. It will change how sort of bright it is based on what's underneath it, um, but not a lot. One of the other challenges with metal is it's tough to highlight because it's very opaque. In the case of pigment, pigment is semi-translucent, right? So like light can go through this. What's making this blue, light can pass through. In the case of this, light doesn't travel through metal, right? I mean, I don't think I'm saying anything too amazing here. So as a result, this is going to, metal is naturally a very opaque paint. The time when it looks thin and it doesn't cover well is whenever you've got big, chunky, metallic flakes in there. If you've ever let metal paint settle for a while, especially if you have some of like the middle-aged GW paints that were pretty terrible, like their metallics were pretty garbage. They had some really good ones back in the day. Then they went through this dark time when they switched, and they had some really, really garbage metals. And um, the flakes in them were just huge. Um, I much prefer these Game Air or Model Air metallics. Let me just say right now, if you want to make a good investment in metals, right here, your Model Air Gun Gray or your Game Air Chainmail Silver, uh, it is the best metallic I've used, and I have used a lot of them, okay? I haven't used all of them. I'm not going to say that, but I have used a lot of them. All right, so that's dry now, so let's move on. What we need to do to push, remember, our goal is something like this, right? Where we simulate the metal effect through extreme contrast, okay? In the same way we did with our real metal. And we can do, since it's harder to highlight because our paint really never thins properly, we're going to do it solely through washes and, uh, and some inks, okay? So, by the way, I'm going to use an ink. You don't have to. You can use uh, just, you know, multiple layers of washes, by the way. Um, I just happen to use an ink because I have this ink and I really like it. Um... And that is this guy right here. So I'm going to grab this scale color intense black ink. There's about a million versions of this out there. So if you like, you can, you know, use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, any kind of like, what we're trying to do is get something a little thicker. Uh, if you don't have any inks or washes, just use black paint. That's fine. Um, if you want to get really sneaky, use some black paint with like some gloss medium or something in it. That would be fine. Um, all of those things will work. Okay. And so... The reason that I'm, I'm doing that is because what we're going to do is we're going to focus on taking this way down. We really want to create these big, dark spots on this to push the contrast. So I'm going to start with my wash here, with my armor wash. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually just go over all of it, okay, with this. And I do recommend, in general, whether you're using Nuln Oil or this P3 or anything, in general, the first thing you want to do with a silver metallic is probably just wash out the whole thing. If you want to leave the brightest parts, what's going to end up being the brightest parts untouched, that's fine. But it's especially useful in the case of like a chain mail to go over and wash everything because it's going to get all the little parts 
It's going to fill all those little holes in between the links, right, with black, which is what we want to see to create that. Basically, chain mail or something like that is, is a pretty perfect time to give a uniform wash to. If I were painting big plates, like, say, a Bretonian's plate armor, I might not be so aggressive with it, but at the same time, I might. Just know that you're going to need to layer back over it. So by putting this on here, we've already we've gotten to where most people go with something like this, right? Where we just kind of wash it down. And that's fine. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with this. This is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. And my problem is, is that in the end, this doesn't really look like metal would look at this size. Okay. Um, so put that guy back away. All right. So what we're going to do here is obviously we let this wash dry. One of the tricks with doing this, one of the problems and challenges is that washes dry really slowly, right? So you have to kind of sit here for a while and let this go. Only, you know, don't. Just work on other stuff. Like, be have multiple parts of your model going at once. Switch over, work on those, etc. Right? And then come back. So this is how I do my metallics. I do the silver layer. I wash them down. I go work on other stuff. You know, I would, like, normally, if I weren't doing this video, I would go and maybe do, like, these belts or something, right? Because I know they're going to want a black wash, too, because I'm going to do these in gray. So hence... You know, try to align your steps so I can do these in gray and then put the wash on them or the ink on them. And then I'm, this is dry by that point and I come back, right? Um, think about the order you're painting your your model in, how you're assigning your paints. You know, being fast when you paint is usually just a manner, matter of planning and making sure, like, once you put paint on the palette, it's useful to you for everything you need to do. Okay? All right. So... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a second layer of that wash and I'm going to go ahead and apply it just around the lower part here where I want it to be really dark, okay? Because that's under his, if you look down how the light's coming down, this is sitting underneath. It would be quite dark. I'm going to just do a second little layer right along there. You notice I drug some up top. That doesn't matter. That's why I didn't paint this first because I want to be able to screw up and get it on here and that's okay. On the next layer down, I'm going to do a second thing right here. And most importantly, I'm going to get way up in there where it's really tucked away. Right? You can't even actually see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Way up in there, right? That is way tucked up underneath his leg. And so this would just be basically black and shadowed. Okay? So. There we go. All right. Uh, with his foot, same thing down here. Turn this around. Sorry, this guy's really big and heavy. He's kind of difficult to get on camera right. Up underneath there is where we want to want to catch the darkest points. So doing metals in general is an experiment in light. Non-metallic metal, uh, true metallic metal, it doesn't matter. It's all an experiment in light and understanding how light interacts with things. When it hits, it's about thinking this light's coming down here from this angle, right? So where is it hitting? Where is the point where it's going to reflect the strongest? Okay. So I put some of my ink here in as well. Now this ink is really dark normally, so I'm going to go ahead and thin that out with some water. And that's still going to be like a really strong black ink. Okay. And that's good. That's what we want. Because now, uh, by the way, normally I would let this dry a little more, so we're gonna, but we're going to be quick for the purpose of the video. Now with the black ink, I'm going to come in and I'm going to trace, not really trace, but I'm going to run my this dark ink right here. Get it way up in there. Way around the sides. So we are taking this way down into like very black, right? So There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to cut for a moment. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back because I want to let that dry completely. I might do another coat or two, but then we'll come back. Okay. And we're back. So all of our washes are dry and you can see now 
where the darkest part is here down underneath the curve of the leg and here all right up underneath the ridge where it would cast a shadow right and so <clears throat> this is the first half we've created our darkness we've washed the whole thing down now we need to go ahead and lighten it up okay and so for that i'm actually going to part of the the, the challenge with this chainmail adds an extra layer of complexity when we're dealing with something like this guy and we want to get this effect right the halberd here what we can use is just some we can thin down some metallics with some medium and we can bring it up and create this blend chainmail however is a little more tricky because we still want to leave the areas in between the links dark right we want those little holes in between the chain links to stay dark so as a result it becomes a little more tricky to work with those thin things so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to put some new chainmail uh on my like gun gray whatever the the darker metal i'm actually going to put some more of that on my palette okay and i'm not going to thin it out in this case in fact what i'm going to do is get nearly all of it off my brush now I'm not really dry brushing let's go to our thumb here uh, you can see how little of that's left aside and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush and with the side of it I've got a very stiff bristled brush I'm just going to very lightly run it up and over okay over the areas I want to highlight just taking the side very lightly touching it we can make lots of little strokes right doesn't need to be one and done we're just barely touching it okay so now we, we can push up our contrast a little if we want to push a little more we push a little more same thing side of the brush nice you can see I painted the other side here too while I was waiting to dry took my own advice Put that down get the back of that we'll get the sides of his feet where the light would hit here again not to return to the idea of painting strategy but this is a good example of where you're painting so you should have a solid painting strategy of like how you're attacking what part because all I, I can be super messy when I'm doing this right I can go up I can hit this other thing who cares yeah, I don't need to be careful because I didn't paint the rest of this yet and it doesn't matter okay now is when we bring in the silver because our highest highlights on metal right let's take my ring here for example this is my example for gold but it's fine the highest highlights on my ring here if we look where the light is particularly reflecting it's basically white it's just reflecting the whitest light right now in this case it's actually hitting you know the light that's directly above me that I paint under but we want to make sure we capture that so we're going to take some of the silver we're going to do the same thing we're going to get most of it off of our brush okay so there's not a lot left and then only in the highest points here I'm going to do the same thing just the side of the brush where I'm trying to create a reflective point of light right so on whatever would be the highest point whatever the light would catch on in this case it would be the top right here right here it'll be his little ankle you can see how this ridge runs down and so we want to preserve that and the same thing here I almost did it wrong there because you saw me stab the paintbrush directly in it's a little tricky that's I, I have a you know I use a, a synthetic just very stiff bristled brush for this because I'm going to tear my brush up and I know I am this is just some garbage brush I bought you know for a couple bucks at the hobby store that I can feel free to shove around and mess with and mess up and not feel bad about it again don't feel like you got to get it all at once you can do it in a couple passes you know I can I can repeatedly do this
And there we go. So now what we've got, and you can see now the silver going down to the very dark black, reflecting more like metal would truly reflect in the light. Okay. Now, this was maybe a 25-minute video, and you might think to yourself, Vince, metal is the thing that I don't mind painting because I can just slap it on and then wash it and call it a day. Well, that's fine. I don't, I'm not going to tell you not to do that. It will look okay. What I want to show you is how, as part of painting the rest of your model, okay, you can just come back every so often. None of these steps took long individually. It took a long time because I was sitting here talking about it. But it's just working with washes. It's a pseudo side of your brush, dry brush, right? It's all just brush control. This would be an easy thing to do while you're just doing other stuff. Go paint other parts of the miniature, then come back and, uh, and, and just do a quick layer of that. Add another wash on it, right? Put your metal in there. Just we are very quickly scoot it across with your dry brush. But it lets you create this very extreme highlight between the bright reflective silver and the very dark non-reflective under, creating those effective shadows on the metallics. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out there. Uh, hopefully that gives you something to think about when you're painting your metallics. Uh, as I said, they I think they are really challenging, but at the same time, uh, I think when you do something like this, and I really I keep going to this one because I really do love how this one turned out. Um, it can just be a lot of fun and really add just an extra layer of, uh, of quality to your paint job. And, and honestly, this didn't take that much time. Uh, if you were doing this as part of your model, I'm talking about an extra minute, maybe, to, uh, you know, over the whole time. And you're, re and you're really going to like the results you get. So, hope you enjoy. And as always, we'll see you next time. Uh -huh.